this video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on liquidation of company, a chapter in corporate accounting. I wish to solve one sum here before you, explaining the concept. Just observe the sum that I intend to solve here before you, wherein I am required to prepare liquidator's final statement of receipts and payment. So I am required to make prepare liquidator's final statement of our statement of receipts and payments. Now the important point to be explained in this sum how the peri pasu suffering is to be accounted for while preparing this receipt and payment statement. All shareholders should suffer proportionately, equitably, peri pasu in case of liquidation of a company. Here there are one, two, three, four and five types five type of equity shares. One is preference share. There are five types of equity shares. First is of 100 face value, second is 50 face value, third is 20 face value, fourth is 10 face value, last is 5 face value. These are the varieties of face value. Again, the paid up amount, this is fully paid up, this is 50% paid up, this is 20 against 8, so 40% paid up, this 10, 6 paid up against 10, so 60% paid up, 3 against 5 paid up, so 60% paid up, so amount paid up per share or amount, the percentage of the paid up value against the face value is also different. Under such circumstances, how equitable accounting of receipts and payment can be made by the liquidator, that's an important point of consideration or focus in this sum. That's an important point to be noticed. Now I am required to prepare liquidator's statement of receipts and payment. Let me start with that. I am going to explain this concept in detail while solving the sum. First of all, I have got a cash balance of 96,000. I have to make payment to the preference shareholders in priority as against equity shareholders. So 1,000 shares of rupees 50, so 50,000 rupees is to be paid to preference shareholders. So 96 minus 50 is the cash balance available to me for distribution amongst this varieties types of equity shareholders. How should I distribute 96,000 minus 50,000 to this varieties various type of shareholders that is a point of focus in this sum. Let me do that. First of all, I have got a cash balance of only 46,000. I prepare one memoranda cash account. Memoranda cash account means not exactly I demand and pay as I mentioned here. But hypothetically I demand and hypothetically I pay and the net amount is to be actually received and paid. That is the philosophy of this memoranda cash account. So I have got a balance of 46,000. Let me write down this balance of 46,000 first of all. Now in this memoranda cash account what I intend to do. Let me demand from all type of shareholders whatever the amount that they have unpaid on the share subscribe against the face value of share. So let me make all these shares fully paid up, 100% paid up. Let me do that. So on this 1000 equity shares of rupees 10 each, they are fully paid up. So I can't demand any last call from them. So the amount of last call demanded on this 1000 equity share is zero. So on 1000 shares, nil rupees are demanded so I get zero rupees remember I must write I should write this nil demand even in my memoranda cash account so that I can work out the refund to be made to them if the shares are fully paid they are not they are not required to pay any last call but they are entitled to have a refund on proposed basis from the cash available that is 46,000 2000 equity shares 50, 25 are paid up. So face value 50, 25 paid up. So I can demand a last call of 25 on how many shares? 2000 shares. So in 2000, 25, this is the cash hypothetically, nostally, I receive from this B category of shareholders. 
फोर थाउजेंड इक्विटी शेयर ट्वेंटी एट पर शेयर पेड है सो शेयर ऑफ ट्वेंटी एट पर शेयर पेड है आई कैन डिमांड अ लास्ट कॉल ऑफ ट्वेल्व ऑन हाउ मेनी शेयर फोर थाउजेंड शेयर सो फोर थाउजेंड इंटू ट्वेल्व इज द अमाउंट रिसीव रिसीवेबल हाइपोथेटिकली फ्रॉम दिस सी कैटेगरी ऑफ शेयर होल्डर्स शेयर ऑफ टेन सिक्स पर शेयर पेड अप सो आई कैन डिमांड अ कॉल ऑफ रूपीज फोर ऑन टू थाउजेंड शेयर सो इन डी कैटेगरी टू थाउजेंड इंटू फोर एट थाउजेंड रूपीज आई हाइपोथेटिकली नो स्टली रिसीव शेयर ऑफ फाइव थ्री पर शेयर पेड अप आई कैन डिमांड टू रूपीज ऑन फोर थाउजेंड शेयर एट रूपीज टू दिस इज द नोस्टल अमाउंट दैट आई एम लाइक यू टू गेट सो आई एम रिक्वायर इफ आई गेट इफ आई गेट दिस मच अमाउंट From these type of shareholders, and I hold a cash of forty six thousand with me. So total cash available to me is one lakh sixty thousand for distribution amongst all these categories of equity shareholders. Remember one important point: these equity shares are having different face value. When the face value are different, we are required to find out refund. Per one rupee of face value of the share, so refund per one rupee of face value of the share. So let me first find out the total of fully paid up shares. Total of fully paid up value of all the shares. So one lakh six. So national paid up capital for all these shares. Now all the shares are fully paid up. So one thousand shares fully paid up because they are already fully paid up given to me. 2000 shares are also fully paid up because i have already demanded the nostal last call c category 4000 into 20 80000 rupees fully paid up because the unpaid amount is already demanded hypothetically and is recorded here d category the total face value 2000 into 10 20000 into 5 so this is the total capital fully paid up capital Whatever the face value, entire amount is demanded on the basis of nominally total paid up capital is three lakh twenty thousand. Now this three lakh twenty thousand is the total paid up face value of all the shares, and one lakh sixty thousand is the cash available to me. Now I am required to find out refund per one rupee of paid up capital or face value because the entire face value is being demanded. So total face up face value of all the shares. And total paid up value of all the shares is same because no last calls are yet to be demanded. So let me find out refund per rupee. So one lakh sixty thousand divided by three lakh twenty thousand. I am required to make a refund of fifteen naira paisa per rupee of paid up capital or per rupee of face value because pay, face value and paid up capital is same because I have demanded all the last calls. That's an important point. So in first category of shares, hundred rupee. Face value is hundred. Refund per rupee is fifty. So per share fifty rupees is to be refunded. On equity share, refund per share is fifty. Per one rupee fifty naira paisa. What is the face value paid? A value hundred. Hundred into fifty. So fifty rupees per share is to be refunded. B type of share. Share of fifty each. Per rupee fifty naira paisa is to be refunded. So twenty five rupees per share is to be refunded. C category share of share. Twenty rupees. Fifteen naira paisa per rupee is the refundable. So per share refundable amount is ten rupees. D category. Face value ten per rupee. Fifteen naira paisa is to be refunded. So five rupees the refund per share. D category. Five rupees. Fifteen naira paisa per rupee is refundable. So per share two point five is refundable. So this is the amount refundable per share. Now let me start with refunding. One thousand into fifty. When two thousand into twenty five, this is the refund. Then four thousand into ten, this is the refund to C category. Now two thousand shares per share five rupees are to be refunded, and four thousand share per share two point five is to be refunded. So if you make a refund, this total will be one lakh sixty thousand. Now this is the nostal hypothetical demand. And this is a hypothetical payment that has been worked out on proposed state basis. Now, a category amount demanded zero payment is fifty thousand. So we have to make up actual payment of fifty thousand. 
This is a nostal demand of 50,000 and nostal payment of 50,000. So actual receipt and payment is not there. So nil payment is to be made. Here 48,000 is the nostal demand and 40,000 is the nostal payment. So actual receipt should be 8,000. Here the nostal hypothetical receipt is 8,000. Hypothetical payment is 10,000. So actual payment should be 2,000 because 10,000 minus 8,000. Here 8,000 is a hypothetical demand and the hypothetical redemption refund is 10,000. So 2,000 is to be paid. So net amount is to be recorded in liquidator's final statement of receipts and payments. That we do that. So A type of shares. Zero is demand and 50 is refunded. So equity shareholder A category are refunded 50,000. 50,000 demand and 50,000 refund. So nil payment. 48,000 demanded and 40,000 paid, so 8,000 is to rupees are to be received from C category. 8,000 and 10,000, so 2,000 is to be paid to B category. 8,000 and 10,000, 2,000 is to be paid to E category. Now this is how the final liquidator statement, therein we record the actual receipts and payment. But to work out the actual receipts and payment, these hypothetical receipts and payments are being worked out. What is the philosophy for that? Demand last call on all categories of shareholders and make them 100% paid up, fully paid up. Whatever the cash balance is available and what is the total paid up capital of the company, find out the refund per 1 rupee of share and that refund Per rupee, whatever the amount of refund per rupee that you get, here we got 15 and a half paisa. Apply that 50 paisa to every category of shareholders face value. So if the face value is 100, refund per share at the rate of 15 and a half paisa per rupee, 50 rupees and so on. Work out the refund per share. And on the basis of refund per share, write hypothetical refund in this memoranda cash account. This memoranda receipts and memoranda refund net effect is to be given in the liquidator's Final statement of receipts and payment. So I have tried to explain you this sum. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all of you. The total is 1 like 4000. You can make it now. So it's simple. Once again, I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all.